Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. It's the Buff Geek here, and I am joined by... It's me, it's me, it's Ian Stoby, back again after a wee hiatus. Oh, oh, I've lost it. Hiatus-y? hiatus I was going to say that. Come on, that was obvious, man. Jeez, <laughs> go with the obvious stuff. Put some... Put some bass in your voice. Turn that up a little bit. I know you're tired. I know you've been doing AFDs. <laughs> I know, I know. And anyway. You know, it is only half past 11. On a Wednesday night. On a Wednesday night. So we're probably going to make try and make this as short as possible without it being too, too short. Too, short. <laughs> too vague. <laughs> too vague, yes. <laughs> so, this is going to be your spoiler... <laughs> All the way through. All the way through. Review of Blade Runner 2049. What a fucking film. Well. (laughs) I. Right. A little bit of backstory. When I first watched Blade Runner, Mm -hmm. I thought it wasn't so great. I liked it. It looked pretty. But I just didn't really. I I wasn't really into it, right? Depends what cut you actually watched. Well, this is when I was uh, this is when I was young, you right, know. Okay. So this is probably when I'm like fucking ten, or uh, eight. I would have been eight when it would have came out. So say two years to get the video mm-hmm. VHS. Yeah, so yeah, so probably ten. I would have been ten, right? So I probably wasn't paying attention to it properly, but I did remember. Well, I always remember Harrison Ford's voiceover, mm-hmm. you know, and, and that's the US theatrical version. Yeah, yeah. and that's not the proper version now although for a lot of people it kind of is in their head because that's the one they would have seen the voiceover in the road at the end and the road at the end which yeah. I actually like the road at the end yeah, yeah I don't know how you feel about it I, I, the voiceover it is not great I, I actually I like it in a way but you can tell Harrison wasn't putting his heart and soul into that mm-hmm. he, he didn't think everyone was going to see the film so no and I, 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 that's what I kind of get about his performance for Blade Runner. So, and then I watch Blade Runner again, and I think actually, you know, it's pretty good. Apart from Harrison Ford, kind of seems like he's not sure if it's comedy, and he's kind of acting a little bit silly for my liking or whatever. So I liked it, but I didn't like him in it. Mm-hmm. And the last time I reviewed the work print with Lee, mm-hmm. I said still, I still don't like Harrison. I've since watched it again. I watched the final cut last week. And I watched the US theatrical just almost straight after, actually straight after the same day I started watching. I didn't this, finish it all. Is this in preparation for tonight? In preparation for tonight. Okay. <laughs> and I start, and I've, I, I really like Harrison Ford in it now. Yeah. For some reason. I still think that maybe he wasn't taking it fully serious. I think the bit he was most engaged with was when he got really rapey with Rachel. Okay. Kind of forceful with her, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, there's just some faces that he was pulling. I just, I, I bet he thought oh, another sci-fi film. Oh God, great! And just could not be hooked. But that's what I kind of get from it, right? <clears throat> you, that's my experience with Blade Runner. Um, for you, was it was it instant love, or was it like me, where you like, nah, it's okay, nah, it's pretty good. Oh, it's fucking great. Oh, for me, for me, it was instant love. I caught it on. I want to say it was it was either BBC Three or Channel Four, like early nineties, when mm-hmm. good films were on TV like all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, now we we've, I'm pretty sure we've talked about this before, probably off the record, um, about different versions that we've probably seen. I know at one point I spoke to you, um, we we were talking about stuff like we're pretty sure uh, Tyrell's death in. One of the cuts, anyway. The one I saw on TV, sorry, that was me. Uh, Owe me a beer! Was more graphic. You know, but um, Rutger Hauer pushes his eyes pushes into his, his head. head. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I, I could remember it being like more graphic, and uh, there's not really that many versions of it now that's got that bit in it. Yeah, and I felt like there was something that happened to the toy maker. Yeah, like Sebastian. Yeah. I'm pretty sure, did he not die and all these toys were watching on? Uh, that's that, that, that's a uh, that's what I've got in my memory that, banks. That's what I've got in mine as well. You know, and I've I've watched now in the last year. Uh-huh. I've watched the work print. I've watched the US theatrical and the final cut. Um, and I know I've watched one. The, there was one that was released maybe ten years ago. That was considered that. Was, what was that? What would that, that, was that have been? That would have been the final cut. I think. Was sure. it the final cut? 
pretty I sure. Think, I think I've watched another one that was before the final cut that was considered to be the... It was the director's cut. I think maybe I watched the director's cut. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> maybe. But you know what? I got the box set there. I might, I'm might. i probably going to put the director's cut on after you leave. Mm. Fair enough. Um, I don't think I'll stay up and watch it all. But, you know, I, I kind of just fancy it, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, See, so yeah, I... I I think we were talking about it on the Aliens podcast when we were doing some some um, random Aliens one. Yeah, I think we just did, a, did it for Alien Day. We, we did like sci-fi. We just went off on one. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. But maybe someone who's listening is sitting there going, it's on this cut, you stupid <laughs> fucks. If so, drop us a line. Please tell us. Please tell us. But that was then. Uh-huh. That was Blade Runner. <clears throat> this is now Blade Runner 2049. Uh, when I first heard they were they were making a sequel I thought oh fuck was that your instant reaction as well uh, it was oh fuck followed by hmm, that could be interesting well when you when they said about Denny Vellanou I was like I, okay, I don't know who that was yeah. at the time you would have known who it was at the I, time I know who it was yeah and yeah. once I saw Arrival I was like oh this is the guy this guy could be the guy. And then they drop in Batista's in it. And I'm like, because he got announced really early on. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay. Um, Batista, I think, is a good actor. But. He's looking awful old for a 48 year old. Yeah, I know, right? Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. I know. <laughs> Shoot or work age. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know, like, back in 2002, he was 45. Now he's. Just be announced he's celebrating his 48th birthday. So, you know, definitely. Was he meant to be 45 in 2002? Yeah. Really? Yeah, because he was supposed to be like one of the more mature. You know. I thought he was going to be mid 30s in 2002. No, they, they, they said he was, he was like in his mid 40s. You know, because they played up his age a fair bit. Because I got his book and I remember reading it all and I was like, this guy's lived an awful lot of life to be, just be 35. Yeah, oh no, he's, he must be pushing 60 if he's a day. You think so? I would say it must be at least 55, 56. Maybe, yeah. if not some. But he's not furry. Come on now. <laughs> well, I think he's meant to be sort of in and, in and around the age bracket of Harrison Ford in, in the film. In the film, yeah. You know? Um, but he did look old. And that just shows, like, if you don't crop your hair or dye it for a little while... <laughs> and you know, get the right light and get a little bit of I don't know, makeup on because he looks much younger in Guardians. But I was thinking about how he looks now. Comp- remember how how, how freaking handsome he was back yeah, in the day, yeah. and his head's almost right. How am I going to say this so I don't upset anyone? Don't get worried. Say so, right? My dad's Chinese, mm-hmm. right? And sometimes. When an Asian person gets older, it, their their head kind of s- squishes down a little bit. Okay. I don't know, it, like, and the, the eyes get a little bit narrower still. Right. Okay. Right. Um. And I know that Batiste is not Asian, but sort of bit. Fil- he's got a bit. Of, he's a bit Filipino. He's a bit this. He's he's got got a few different things going on there, right? <laughs> and I I think you can. You can see that he's not a straight up white dude from when he first came into WWE yeah, yeah. in two thousand two. Like he could have just been like just another guy from the from from America, but you can kind of see that he's got some sort of other lineage going on there as he gets older. His head his head seems like it's been squished down a little he's, bit, he's got right? This big big mass, yeah, and little tiny head. Yeah, it's like. <laughs> I look at pictures of myself from when I was younger and I look more Asian now. Even though I don't look particularly Asian, I look more Asian now. So I reckon when I hit like 50, people be like, oh yeah, you are Chinese. And I'm like, yes, I've been telling you that for ages. No one's believing me. <laughs> anyway, do, do okay, you know what? Now you see it. Now you see it. Now you see it. Um, how are we talking about Batista? There he is there. Look, I've got an actual figure of him. That's a white dude right there. <laughs> it is actually, yeah. Yeah. Uh, casting. Casting. Yeah, so... Hear about Batista, and you kind of think, I think he's good, but he has been in a couple of shit films. Mm-hmm. Does the occasional action film that's not great. 
you think he's good, but he's not Blade Runner good. No. No, like when, when he first got announced. No, I was worried because it meant because Batista's been in. Okay, so he's in Guardians. Yeah. Yep. And he looked the part in James Bond, mm-hmm. but they wrote him a shit part, basically, and wasted him. I think. Um, he's been in some other things where he's where he's really good, but then he's in lots of like kind of, you know, like the action film section on Netflix, and you're like, oh, what's that? I've never heard of that. Wrong side of town and stuff, you know, like what. That doesn't. He was in Riddick as well. Yeah, so things like that. Yeah. When you when you when you hear that he's in a film, you kind of wonder which way is it going to go? Mm. Is it Blade? Is we going to we, are we going to get the Blade Runner? Or are we going to get like the wrong side of town? A, the wrong side of town, right? You know, like a a bad a bad uh, sequel. Mil- that's millions came to light. of dollars or fifty cents. Pretty much. <laughs> and Ryan Gosling being announced. Ryan seems to be able to do everything. Mm-hmm. Like, the first thing I ever saw him in was Murder by Numbers. Right, yeah. yeah. Have you seen that? The Sandra Bullock film, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. good, and he's he's like, he's got this total psycho edge, he's like really young in it, and he's brilliant. And then, probably the next thing I saw him in was The Notebook. The Notebook, yeah. And he's, you know, doing this big kind of rom-com thing, I think it's a great film. Um... And and then he's he, he was in like a like a kind of a, I don't know what you call it, like an art house film, uh, a place beyond the pines. Oh, it's a great film. It's great yeah. up until about halfway. I don't want to spoil anything, but up until about halfway, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Then it lost it for me. Right. Okay. And then he was in that crazy kind of other art house film. It was really action based. Um, there's hardly any dialogue, and he. I can't. Was that only God forgives? Only God forgives. Yes. Yeah. That, that was a bizarre film yeah. and then Drive is fantastic but you, you can buy that he's a badass you can buy that he's singing and dancing you can buy that he's a psychopath Gangster Squad I, he was great in that I loved, I loved Gangster Squad I liked Squad. it I think it's great him and, him and um, what's her face have great chemistry don't they yeah, that's three films they've been in together yeah true yeah. Um, and he can just he can also do like just like nice looking pin up guy like he can yeah. do everything and so that made me quite happy. Harrison being back involved, you're kind of like, okay, what Harrison are we getting here? <laughs> I was a bit worried at first because I actually thought he was just going to be a fleeting cameo. You had to uh... see when he walks away. Yeah, yeah, I thought that was it. Like, I was yeah. like, please don't tell me that's him done. <laughs> I quick, quickly, we'll jump ahead slightly, but yeah, of course we've already given the spoiler warning as well. So yes, they've seen if, it. If you're still listening by this point, it's your own fault. Um... That's what you tell. <laughs> you were less nice a, le- a year ago you kept saying if you've seen the film and we're like they've seen it they've seen Suicide Squad <laughs> like um, like when Ryan Goswell Kate or Kate or Joe you know he, start, he kept changing his name halfway through ends up at uh, the big casino that Harrison Ford's been using as his hideout mm-hmm. and um, obviously like, he gets infiltrated and he gets dragged away in the car they take him away. Then Kate was speaking to uh, the woman with the missing eye, and they were talking about uh, like they start, it, it sounded like they were talking about Deckard in the past tense, and I was like, "Oh shit, we're not going to see him again. He's got his big paycheck and he's fucked off. That's it. He's, he's pulling a Force Awakens on us. You know? It's done. He's, he's out. He's done. But uh, no, I'm glad. I'm glad he came back for the rest of the film after that. You know? Yeah. Yeah. He's in it way more than like some. Someone said to me, "Oh, he's hardly in it." He's in it quite a lot, actually. He's, yeah, you know. Okay, he's not in it for the full three-hour duration, but uh, but there's a lot of setup there. Yeah, no, there's it's not three hours. It's only two, two and a half. Two and a half. Yeah. But plus the like the time you actually go to the cinema, and you know, if you go to the start time, you got twenty twenty-five minutes of adverts. You know, the, get the adverts and stuff. Go and get a couple of pee breaks in and stuff. Yeah. Um, I didn't recognize any of the girls. I, I, I Robin Wright. It's obviously fantastic every yeah. time she's in anything. It's great. Um, I didn't recognise the th- the three or four of the girls actually. Uh, so who we got? The girl who I pretty sure was trying to rip off the press from the original. Yes. Uh, Mackenzie Davis. What's she in? She is in. Is she in Judge Dredd? No, no, she's not. She was in The Martian with Matt Damon. Didn't didn't she, like The Martian. She plays tech now. She was in Black Mirror. As well, the San Junipero episodes. It was in season four. Season oh, I never got that season far. Season three. Oh, maybe I did. It's the one where they um, 
it starts off in the eighties. No, don't don't tell me then. Right, I want to okay. watch it. Right. Black Mirror is Black Mirror is one of the few things that me and Kerry agree are is good, and we're going to watch it. Tell you something, just a quick plug. If you like uh, Black Mirror, you should check out Electric Dreams. It's, oh yeah, I saw that advertised. It's it a bunch, kinda... sh- bunch of short stories by Philip K. Dick. Yes. So it's kind of ties in, but the, the cast in each episode is pretty fucking amazing. You know, it looks pretty fucking sweet it's actually. Good. That's, that's my new fix right now. Is it? Brian Cranston's in it at one point. Yeah, actually, he's a executive producer as well. I'm trying to pull up the Blade Runner cast because I want to get the names right. Oh right, no, I've got it right here. You got it there? Yeah, I do. Did. Oh, oh, I've I've got a little bit, a little bit of some summon. Oh no, I just got Blade Runner eighty two. Ha ha. So who's it we're looking for? Um, so I want to know his girlfriend. It was a uh, joy, and it's Ada de Armas, who was gorgeous. I have to say. Yes, she was very gorgeous. I could, I could absolutely do with one of them <laughs> when I come home. It's not every man's dream. <laughs> every come man's, home and she's like, I, I'm going to go out on a limb and say I actually did have a wee fancy for love. <laughs> a wee fancy for love. Fancy for love. Yeah. Love was the the main fame fatale that was in it. Oh, I didn't like her. Did you know? I didn't like her one bit. No, I must admit I did. There was, there was something about her. Sil- <laughs> Sylvia Hoex. That's the one. What's she in? I recognise her face, but I can't... Oh, she's 34, just like me. <coughs> oh. I mean, I'm younger and stuff. I uh, don't recognise any of the films that she's in there. I... Okay, we'll get we'll get, we'll get get to her maybe later then. But she would be one of the things I, did, I liked... Like disliked about the film. Okay, okay. If I was going to choose anything, um, oh, so I'm just looking at the cast there. It was cool when Gaff turned up, wasn't it? Oh man, I was so happy. I was like, oh, Edward James, almost. You can't have a play drummer with him. Yeah, it's good yeah. that he got a minute. Uh, and I presume that they also managed to get, um, Sean Young's voice. Or did yeah, they just... well, she got credit. I don't know if that was. Just a like a for the likeness maybe yeah but um, maybe maybe she maybe she'll do some tracks for the voice as well even Elvis is in it and Frank Sinatra I know <laughs> you know what see at one point I was like I could quite happily sit and watch this Elvis show <laughs> I was just quite happily enjoying them just setting up this world and watching Ryan just wander around doing shit yeah like I could happily watch Ryan just like go about brush his teeth. <laughs> Did you have a thought like I did? And I was like, hmm. Now, I know they brought one out like 20 years ago for the Amiga, but I was like, see if there was like a Blade Runner computer game maybe mm-hmm. for like the Xbox or stuff like that. I'd probably buy it just to be in that world, you know? Yeah, I would I would want to, but I, I just don't, I just never game. Like, I've, I get games and I never play the damn things. Just, ugh. I think a PS4 is going to be my next purchase. You think so? Yeah, I mean, I'm not the world's biggest gamer. I'm still hanging on to my Xbox 360 for like, you know, the last 10, 11 years or stuff like that. I'm thinking I need to upgrade and I think a PS4 might be the way to go. Just because some of the games that are coming out are like totally up my street. Such as? Well, I've got that new Call of Duty that's coming out. Okay. You know, uh, but, uh, Star Wars Battlefront. Well, see, I was thinking Battlefront looks good. Um, Call of Duty's always good fun. Um... I, I was thinking to get a new uh, the new Xbox, well the Xbox One. Xbox One, yeah. Just just a couple of games on there. I was thinking, yeah, I could do with the upgrade, you know. But I'd only ever play it on occasion. I'd I'd only play it if people were around. I'm not really like an online gamer. See, I'm, I'm the same. I just have to I'm just old school that way, you just know. Old school, yeah. Man. Uh, Lenny James from The Walking Dead. He he cropped up in it at one point. Who was he? He was uh, Mr. Cotton, the guy who was like running the sweatshop with all the kids. Oh, right, yeah. they've taken all the computers apart. And, uh, and he was selling kids, right? For the the, for, the for, sexual purposes of, right? I thought he was selling them as to be workers. That's, you know, like... I thought he was... I thought he, he was selling one to Ryan like it was a bit of a paedophile ring on the side. Maybe it was. Maybe I didn't pick up on that. That's what I got from it. Because I was too busy going, oh my God, it's Lenny James. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, <laughs> you might have been slightly distracted. Yeah. Uh, Barkad Abdi Doc Badger he was in um, he plays the head Somali pirate, pirate in Captain Phillips yeah you've lost me he was the guy I've not who, seen Captain Phillips not seen Captain Phillips he was the guy who was looking at the wooden horse 
and it was like, yeah, of course, I always start coming up with subtitles. Oh, that guy, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, he was like, oh, I know where to get it, you know. I know where it is. Is Karen Phillips the one about the plane? No, it's the, the boat. The Smiley Pirates take over the boat. Tom Hanks is in it. Yeah. What's the one where he lands the plane? The plane, the plane. I don't know why it starts sounding like uh, the guy from Panic's Island. Um, who? Tom Hanks? Yeah. Oh, Sully. Sully, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, I, th- I thought you were meaning Sully. No. I know I know it's a castaway. I was like, the plane, well, yeah, the plane technically did land, but not. Yeah, there's a plane in it somewhere. <laughs> there's a plane in it somewhere. Um, yeah, I mean, like, everybody cropped up. Even, you, you don't watch The Wire, do you? No, but there's a guy, this guy here. This guy, who, who, no, no, not this guy. Uh, Avon Barksdale from The Wire crops up in it. He was in Dread. There's someone, the, 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 the mortician... I recognise him from somebody. Oh, it just seemed like there's lots of faces that you kind of recognise. He was, what was, what was it, uh, he was in? Uh, he was in Ant-Man. Oh, that's why I recognise him from Ant-Man. Yeah. You're, yeah, yeah, there's something it. else he was in that I totally recognised him from. Hold on, right. I'm just gonna, so in Ant-Man, he was the, like, how Ant-Man's got his, like, team of other criminals. He's, yeah. like, the tech guy, right? He's in Twin Peaks. The, like, the new season of Twin Peaks. Oh, yeah, we need to hear Belco that experiment or something that. There's something it must have been the Belco experiment remember him and uh, Michael Rooker oh that's see for me in my head that's not even come out yet it's oh. come out and it's gone it came out like last year right yeah, or some shit you can pick up on like DVD and stuff like that now it's fucking awesome I'm going to get on Blu-ray if I, I really fancy it um, yeah the, the thing about this film is that I kept seeing faces that I sort of recognised but yeah. I wasn't quite able to place them mm-hmm. so it's almost like they got a lot of faces like recognisable people you'll probably recognise more than me mm. but you know how like in 80s films you just the acting community was a bit smaller so you'd kind of be like that's cop guy <laughs> and that's this guy mm. it kind of had that vibe to it for me so that's probably okay Okay. so if we're going to talk about things we like about the film the cast which we are talking about the cast right now the cast is beautiful Sp- there was sort of one bad cock Amongst any of them, they've worked their ass. Well, out. apart from oh, one right, for me. Here we go. <laughs> I did not like the femme fatale. Right. Okay. I, I did not find her attractive in any way. Right. Okay. Um, See, I did in a weird kind of way. Though, like. And I didn't. I didn't. When you when you've got Rutger Hauer, 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 Hauer. I've always said Hauer. Right. Well, let's say Hauer then for yeah. this. Rutger Hauer. Putting on the performance of a lifetime and probably his most iconic role. I, I, I can't. And if it's not, you, you could certainly oh, argue those it. Moments will be lost, like tears in rain. Yes. Yes. Um, when you go from that to this girl here, uh-huh. nah. No. Nah. Like she's not even as good as Lenny. And Lenny couldn't really string, string much of a sentence together. Leon, sorry. I was like, who the hell was Lenny? <laughs> Who's Lenny? <laughs> Leon. I was, I was like, what? No, she she didn't she didn't do it for me. She Wake up, time to die. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, I love it. Uh, and he goes to, to to pierce his eyes as well, which I only noticed this week. Yeah, yeah, he goes to take his eyes out, which is interesting because the eyes are the window to the soul, soul. and they spoke about that, didn't they? Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, yeah, so that was the only thing I didn't I didn't like her, and when they had the final fight scene, I was kind of like, I just when's when's Leto coming out to fight him? And that didn't happen. Yeah, yeah, that funny. That was. I was going to wait till we brought this up, but I'm, I'm just going to get off my chest now. Like that's the only thing out of this whole experience that has kind of left a, a niggling question in the back of my mind. Is unless I completely missed it, there really was no payoff for uh, Andrew Wallace. You know, I was expecting him to get his comeuppance or at least something, but. Well, it almost feels to me like they're looking to do a third one. Right. And I was kind of thinking about this. But like, you thought you would have got like some kind of explanation. Like The last we saw of them was uh, they killed the the Rachel replicant when they realised they'd made a big, big mistake. Yes. Like, a total colossal fuck-up. And uh, so they eliminated the problem. Tyrell wouldn't have fucked up like that. Oh, no, not at all. Tyrell was the man, you know. Mm. Uh, then he became the bartender in The Shining. It was fucking awesome. 
<laughs> oh my god, so he was! Yeah, yeah same guy. And that's funny because they used the Shining, the extra scenes from the Shining for the end scene in the US theatrical cut. That's right, yeah, they used, used the, the road. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, you know, I, I, like, right at the very end, when you could see it was closing, well, well it obviously it was closing, but I thought we were about to get a scene of maybe something happening to, you know, Neander Wallace, Jared Leto's character. You know who was cast as him before Jared Leto? Who? David Bowie. Really? Yeah. Oh no, I remember that. I remember reading that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It was he supposed to be been... but then obviously he, he passed on, so I like Jared Leto's performance. I like Jared Leto as an actor and not just because he's because he won that Oscar. Uh, as the... an actor, yes, but I hear about a lot of stuff he does off screen, which kinda of winds me up. Like I was listening to an interview with Den- Denny Villeneuve like a couple of days ago mm-hmm. and he was telling me that Jared Leto never saw any of the crew and he never saw any of the cast because the contacts he had in made him blind and the entire time he was on set he was blind because he wore them because he's, he's method yeah 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 and uh, he had to get helped about by his assistant all the time so like he has no idea who he was working with in terms of crew so he probably unless he's met before he probably didn't know who the DOP was he probably didn't know who the sound man was because he never saw any of them Holy shit. You know, <laughs> so... Because he was in character the entire time he was there. Wow. Why can't you just go on and act? I don't know. <laughs> I think it's more fun to go method. Oh, it's, it's not something I subscribe to if I can help it. Yeah, that's, that surprises me, being a wrestler. Okay. Because you kind of got you got to be on. Yeah, true. And in my head, like I was on as soon as I got to the venue... If I was a heel and people were wanting, you know, signatures or saying, oh, hey, whatever, I'd be like, I would just stare them down or tell them to hit the road in a non-polite way. And after the show, same thing. 80s, man. 80s. 80s, yeah. <laughs> I was I was kayfabing that shit. Like ben, a, Vince C would be so proud of you. <laughs> well, many, many a uh, um, booker said to me, can you not just sign some stuff for the kids or take some pictures? And I'm like, nope, I'm a heel. And they're like, no, but it's a work. And I'm like, yep. But not to me, it's not. <laughs> when Robbie Brookside tells you to not be smiling and taking pictures with the kids after the show, if you're a heel, I'm sure his tune would be different now with the company line. What was that? Was that just a wee name? You just a wee that? name drop? Oh, oh. Did, did, <laughs> pass me that name back there up, would go. you? Thank you. When Robbie <laughs> Brookside tells you that. <laughs> dong. <laughs> you like that one, uh, Andrew? <laughs> um, but uh, I, you know, okay, okay, okay I'm getting get me that one. It's a, just surprising for me for a wrestler to not yeah. be method. In no, the method. Sorry, I, I was going to quickly go back to the whole Jared Leto thing. Okay, yeah, Jared Leto. Like, I, I don't know, it kind of took me a while to warm up to his character. It did feel a little bit like the... He could have been the bad guy for any film. Mm-hmm. Like the James Bond baddie almost. Yes, yeah. yeah. Um... Like, his first scene I sat and watched that, I was just like, hmm, okay. But when he had that scene with Harrison Ford, I was kind of drawn drawn into it. I did quite like it, I have to say. That was good, yeah. but he didn't feel quite like he was part of this film. Right, okay. In a way. Mm. So if someone said to me, I don't like it, and they couldn't vocalise what it was... Would you I, say, it was Jared Leto, right? No, 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 <laughs> I, no, if they said to me they didn't quite like Jared Leto's performance, right. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with, with his performance... I just don't think that he was seamlessly interwoven into the film. And maybe if he had a scene with Ryan Gosling, that would have helped. Right, okay, okay. You know? Right. Um, but again, I mean, he looked cool and, and the whole thing with the replicant, that, you know, when he cut her and he was he was wanting to make the, the perfect baby. Yeah, yeah. That all that all worked. I mean, he, he he did a really good job. Although I I think you know the little things that fly about, mm-hmm. it just kind of the, the sound they made was was, was kind of like little fart sound or something, right? It, it doesn't really help with the speakers that were in the screen that we were watching it on. Was it not just like super loud sometimes? Like it was going to fucking blow your face off. Super crackly as well. That's that that that, that screen's notorious for like having like really really bad crackly speaker what, systems. wasn't There wasn't the best speakers like, but. Crack and score by Hans Zimmer, I have to say. 
Yes, but it felt more like Arrival than Blade Runner. Right, okay. For, for me, the film felt like somewhere in between. But they, I never quite got the Blade Runner soundtrack that I wanted. I picked up... Is there a right, reason for that? Right at the very end. That was the best one. The, when, uh, the, the original... Well, it was like a... Not an adaptation, but like a new arrangement of the original... Blade Runner theme, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, as the snow was coming down and Gosling was sitting on the steps, you know, I was like, ah, there we are. I was kind of hoping that was going to be right at the very start, but yeah, I th- I could have done with a little bit more Blade Runner music than um, Arrival music throughout the film. Did you want them to bring back Vangelis just for? Is that the main the main uh, that tune? Was the main composer for the the first. All oh, right. Well, yes. Then yes. Yeah. I assumed it would have been. Yeah, I mean, basically, I, I mean, I, I know I listed the X amount of cast that I knew were going to be in Blade Runner. Oh, I completely forgot about Batista, and I was like, "Oh, Batista, Batista!" And you're like, "Yeah, yeah, I know." I know, I know, I know. Who Batista is <laughs> Jesus Christ. I, yeah, um, but I didn't really read anything into it because I didn't. I, I generally, if, I, if it's a film I really like or really want to see, I try and read as little as possible. Yeah, no, I'm the same. And no one ever spoke about the score in anything I listened to or read in the entire. T- like when it when I was actively avoiding it, but you know you, people drop shit in. Uh, they never they never came. The score was good, but I could have done something a little bit more Blade Runner. Right. Okay. A little bit, more, but maybe they want maybe they wanted to stay away from that eighties vibe that's so popular right now. You know what I mean? Like maybe they want you didn't want to make it seem like a. See, I've got the I've got the original soundtrack on my phone. I listen to it when I can. Usually at work, when the shit's hitting the fan, and you're just like, ah, right, I need to chill. Need yeah. time to chill, relax. There we go. Right, gonna have that one in the corner there. That's I fine. Think I might need to get that. Something I did like. It was just a wee detail, and I could be completely off the mark, but this is how I interpreted it. Mm-hmm. Where um, Ryan Gosling and uh, Deckard, I was totally confused. I used an actor's name and a character's name. Uh, I've just had the little punch up, you know, during the Elvis and Marilyn Monroe show. Mm-hmm. Uh, when they're sitting at the bar drinking away, and Harrison Ford is asking the questions. You know, it's just, I've got some questions to ask, and Harrison Ford's getting all pissed off. And so he starts firing his own questions back. Mm-hmm. The only thing that went through my head was Ah, I see what he's trying to do there. It's the old Voight Kampf test to try and elicit a, yeah. a response. You know, and I was just like, I wonder if that's actually meant to be happening, or I'm just like, you know, you know, be like a total fanboy here, you know. I think <laughs> there's, I think you could watch the film and you can make a lot of assumptions that they're doing stuff like that yeah. or, or whatever. And at the same time, it could be none of it. Yeah. And I think that that's probably one of the best things that Denny Villeneuve's done, is that he's managed to make a three-hour, well, two-and-a-half-hour film that has got so much in, so much interpretation to it mm-hmm. that it works with the original, because the original... I mean, Ridley Scott says that Harrison Ford's a replica. Mm-hmm. Harrison Ford says he always played it as if he wasn't. Yeah, yeah. He didn't realise he was replicant as far as I'm aware. No, he, he said he, he played it as if he wasn't a replicant because he doesn't think he is. Yeah. He, yeah. Just, he, just, he said, for me, in my mind, he's not. At least that was one of the interviews I watched, right? It just reminds me of like the usual suspects when like all the way through filming up until the point, um, I think it wasn't, it was after the premiere, Gabriel Byrne always believed that he was Kaiser Sose. Oh really? He did, and it wasn't until um, like the premiere. I think they watched it, and uh, Brian Singer was like, "No, you were never Kaiser Sose." <laughs> <was> just, okay. <laughs> he must be really confused when he saw the ending. I, I think he was, yeah. <laughs> Wait, so did Kevin Smith just keep that to himself? <laughs> Possible. <laughs> Imagine they were sitting there getting pissed one night, and Singer's ah, like, remember, "Remember that time you thought you were Kaiser Sose?" Spacey, Spacey, Spacey. <laughs> tell you what, tell you what, we'll make you Kaiser Sose. Really? Yeah, yeah, don't tell, don't tell Byrne. Don't tell, don't, 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 don't tell Byron. No, 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 no. Keep that to herself. Man. Yeah, don't tell him, don't tell him. Shh, we'll, just, just, we'll just film this bit. Pick ups, pick ups. funny. <laughs> and then, like, on the night, they'll be like, Swerve, bro! <laughs> Russo? Russo? <laughs> bro. Bro. <laughs> I wish I could do a proper New York accent. Bro. No, bro. I can't, I can't do it. Um... Yeah, I think there's a lot of things that you could kind of go, oh, is it this? Is it that? Is it nothing? Yeah. Is it in my head? Yeah. You know? Um, 
I think that oh, I can't decide who is who is Harrison Ford's daughter because they in the film they they still don't really say that he's a replicant. You know, they never they never they just leave it super open that Harrison Ford may or may not be human mm-hmm. the whole way, right? Rachel's a replicant. Oh, absolutely, yeah. And she's Nexus 7, as far as I can tell. Yeah. So this one's full of the Nexus 8. This is all the Nexus 8. Because w- when Batista rams Ryan Gosling in the wall like six times, I was like, holy fuck, that's amazing. And then Ryan just flips him around and gives him one slap. Yeah. And that's him basically fucked. I was like, I ain't buying did that. I, did I give him like a few forearms to throw? Yeah, but, but yeah. he first gave him a slap or a punch, and then Batista was pretty fucked up. Then he gave him forearms to the throat. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, nah. And then when he stabbed him and didn't react, I was like, Oh right, he's a replicant. This makes sense. He's a new model, right? I now buy that you could beat Batista. Yeah, you know, because at first I was like, nah, <laughs> just nah. But then, because like the he took a beating from Harrison. Yeah, yeah. And Harrison managed to inflict quite a lot of damage on him. Mm-hmm. So but then Harrison <sighs> managed to knock himself out in the process as well. So... Yes, he did. So I don't know. I can't. Make sure like, more that he's human, he's right? He's human, yeah. So I think they just left that open as fuck for us. They're just like, do you know what? We're not answering it. And I, I think, I can't remember where I read, if I read this or, I, or a tweet or whatever, and Denny Villeneuve was asked why I want to do Blade Runner so much. And he basically said, because I don't want anyone else to fuck it up. It's kind of cool. Mm-hmm. But, uh, he also got Ridley Scott's blessing because he said he wasn't going to touch it unless the big man himself said, you know, it's okay, you go ahead, you do it. That's all you need, eh? And I'll be there if you need me. That's what Ridley Scott said, though. So. Wow. Wow. So, the questions that are raised in the film. Okay. The fuck happened to Jared Leto's character? What happened to Jared Leto's character? <laughs> Neander. <laughs> what, um, and who is Deckard's real daughter? So. Or is it. Actually, Ryan Gosling, and it's a double double swerve, bro. <laughs> bro, yeah. I mean, I bet like it got me going because I thought they're giving away this plot way too early in the film, you know. And then swerve. Oh, you thought you were his son? I was like, oh, all right, okay. <laughs> Is that when, like, I thought the same. I I was like, okay, so they're giving the plot away, and I didn't think anything on different until she like, said it. Yeah, I thought it was just okay. Well. Let's go and hunt for, uh, you know, I'll try to find my dad here and then try to find my sister, you know, I'll try to get the family back together again, as it were, until uh, the woman said that and I was like, oh, okay, right, I I, I welcome this turn of events, so I do. (laughs) So for me, instantly, I thought that the girl with the, the hooker was her. Right, okay. That's what I thought. But she was real. No, she wasn't. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure. How would she interface with the, with with the the kind of hologram girl? I think that was down to the hologram girl. I think cause I don't know if she was. Because remember how there was the three girls that came up, uh, Ryan Gosling. There was her, uh-huh. and there was the two mates, and then they were like, "Oh, he's a he's one of them said he's dangerous. He's a blade runner." Yeah. And the two girls left, and she said something about if you ever been with a real girl. Yeah, but I think she was considering it like a real woman compared to a hologram. Right, okay. Because why would she be scared of a Blade Runner if she's human? But she, she wasn't scared of a Blade Runner, that was the thing. No, but... She stayed. The, 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 our two friends were scared, but she stayed. And she's like, oh yeah, you're just a man eating noodles. Or rice or whatever it was. Yeah, but she had a mission. Yeah, she was on a mission, yeah. She was working for the underground well Sex, for the, yeah. the, the people in, in film 3 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which will probably never happen because the film made no money we'll have to wait 20 more years uh-huh, you know. we still got a shot brother <laughs> we still got a shot <laughs> um, yeah I, I I think that she's a replicant and I think that, that that's part of the reason why the girl why the uh, what would you call her what's her name the, the, the hologram Joy. Joy. And that's part of the reason why Joy contacted her, because she can kind of sort of interface with her. 
right. to a certain point because she said I'd seen what I've seen what's in you and you're not that hot. Right, okay. Or you're not that smart or there's not that much to you or whatever. And the way they were talking I kinda of felt like they were two different styles of of, of computer or, or technology and the the replicants are, are almost disgusted by the the next um, gen. Yeah, which would be these holograms. So that's what I took from it, and then you have taken something completely different. Mm-hmm. Be interesting to see who, who thinks who who's <laughs> got it, or if everyone's like, "Yeah, I'm confused as well. I thought it was this, but now maybe, maybe, maybe Ian's right. But maybe it is hmm. after all, a Philip K. Dick novel. You know, they're not totally straightforward. So has this got anything to do with his novel? Uh, I think it's kind of ba- well, it's based on his characters anyway. Yeah, and it's probably based on parts of the original Blade Runner that it didn't use. So, mm-hmm. <clears throat> like. Did Robin Wright's character know he was? Well, yeah. Well, did she, did she know he was a replicant? She knew he was a replicant. Yeah. Okay. The only reason I asked that is because it, midway through the film, I was thinking he wasn't a replicant. That's quite right. a fully a replicant. See, well, the the whole. The but whole she was trying to fuck him, right? The whole station knew he was a replicant. That's why he was getting so much prejudice when he went in. Yeah, but did did she know that he was a, a standard replicant or potentially the 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 Messiah replicant? Because the conversation she had with that... She probably thought he was special somehow. Yeah, because she kept saying he was special. He had to keep going for his, his baseline tests as well. Oh my God, how annoying was that? <laughs> the only thing that got me was, why are you giving him the answer? Why are you asking him a question giving him the answer? <laughs> yeah, that was weird, but I suppose, depending how you say it, if someone asks you a question and gives you the answer, and you're just to repeat it, you'll st- if, you're, if your emotions are... You know, if you're in emotional turmoil in any way, you'll still exhibit that. Yeah. I suppose it just makes it... And because it's fast-paced, it means you you can't hide it as well, maybe? You know, at least with the Voight-Kampf test, you know, it asks you questions. I was missing that. You know, like your your humanity, as it were, you know. You're in a desert and you find a turtle on its back. What do you do? (laughs) You know, What's a a turtle? Well, that, that way they'd be like... Mm. No, that's not for you, is there? No. <laughs> he, he's definitely a replicant. <laughs> See, when they said to Rachel, okay, so they're serving some food and the entree is boiled dog. Mm-hmm. And she's just like... <laughs> I'm thinking... <laughs> oh, not again. <laughs> what? I, had, I had that yesterday. <laughs> I had that yesterday, Dad. I'm, I'm thinking, this is like... The world of Blade Runner has got like a very heavy like Asian influence... Because the the city, the the, it looks like the gutter speak look like Tokyo. The whole place kind of looks like Tokyo in a way, you know. Yeah, the 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 the, 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 the was it city speak or underground speak or what the city was speak? It? City speak, yeah. yeah. It's like a mix of like fucking Chinese and German and English, right? Mm-hmm. And, and Spanish, and there's lots of Chinese uh, characters all about the place. So when they say boiled dog, I'm kind of thinking. I'm pretty sure they probably serve that. I'm pretty sure Decker just ate boiled dog with fucking noodles. Yeah, you know, like it's like. I always kind of thought, uh, I'm not sure if that's terribly conclusive because I reckon Boiled Dog is something that people have there. But See, I'm always fascinated. <clears throat> I've been since a kid by like, uh, Boiled Dog, no, not at all. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like the whole vision of dystopia. Oh my gosh, yeah. Because you know, like, let, let's be honest, the way the world's going right now, this could be right around the corner. Ah, <laughs> it's it's, it's, it's kind of like that, but then it's also because of all the the um what's the word I'm looking for here sanctions no uh snowflake motherfuckers no that's not what I meant to say um I, don't, I can't even I can't even pull the bring the words up it's, it's maybe a little bit late but <clears throat> I, I think it could go you know in like Star Trek how everything's like super sterile and clinical and bland and everyone's asexual and um no one like, is allowed to exhibit oh, any emotion. The sky is blue and the plants are green. And... Yeah. Yeah. Right, like, okay. No one is allowed to be exhibit any emotion. Um, there's like a standard uniform that you wear. Mm-hmm. I think there's a chance, more chance of it going that way with all this fucking... Yeah, I, I think you just got to watch like Judge Dredd or something like that and realise that's, the, that, way, that's yeah, the way it's going to go. It'll be, it'll be both. <laughs> That'll be the poorer areas. You know. Like, some... some, some um, some state in America just made it made it a, a, a law that if you get someone's gender wrong, you, you, you'll be prosecuted. 
Wow, really? That's what I read. Okay. And it's prevalent. It's certainly getting a lot of traction in Canada. Right. So if I call you... Um, I, I presume it would even work if I called you bro, because that suggests that you're a man, right? But you identify as a woman. Okay. I'm in trouble. Okay. Hey, man. How's it going? I'm not a man. <laughs> I'm calling a call right now. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's... it's it's to that level of everyone's offended. And it's kind of like... Anyway, before we get mired into this, let's just talk about like, <laughs> the vision of dystopia. Are those bullets coming off your brow there? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The vision of dystopia, yeah. yeah. You you put dystopia on something and I'm, in, I'm interested. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's just like... Um, well, like, see, we brought them up right. So we've got Blade Runner. We've got Judge Dredd. We've got the new Blade Runner. Um, just that vision of everything's kind of dark and well dark but it's and not because in the rich areas it's it's crisp and beautiful okay and that's that's what I'm trying I'm saying I'm saying it's going to be it's going to be like Judge Dredd for the poor areas and then it's going to be like fucking Star Trek I've always wondered you know how how I would survive in like you know down, down those mean streets or whatever you know the mean streets the, the mean streets yeah you're you're someone's bitch I, um, I wouldn't go that far <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's a weird one. Just like, uh, sorry, I'm just kind of going off on one now. But yeah, you know, everybody's like this dystopian timeline universe kind of thing that seems to be happening right now. I think now. you'd survive the same way that you do now. Yeah. Going about your business. But there's just a higher danger factor. Yeah, yeah. But also, there could be many a pleasures out there. So people keep talking about the blackout in this film. Oh, yeah. So I'm guessing just. Is that when the aliens come? Because aliens are part of the Ridley Scott Blade Runner universe, of course. Well, yeah, well, apparently so. Uh, but we don't talk about his recent output in Aliens. Uh, Still not seen it yet. <laughs> you know, no. I actually quite liked it, to be honest. I, I preferred it to Prometheus. Do they smoke? The only thing I want to know, do they smoke a lot of fags? I can't remember. I don't think so. No, then it's bullshit. Right. Okay. Um, yeah, judging by the surroundings and some of the events that do happen in the film... I'm guessing the blackout was some sort of nuclear explosion at one point. You think? Well, there was a lot of ash kicking about in the on the streets. Yes. And also there was that area of Los Angeles where Deckard was hanging out that seemed abandoned possibly due to high levels of radioactivity. Well, this is something that makes me think that Deckard is a replicant. Because he survived that long. (laughs) No, the the fact that whoever came with the femme fatale, Mm -hmm. they were all wearing breathing apparatus. It was probably just a... uh, Precaution. Precaution. Because once it fell off, they were... They were fine. But maybe... But, I mean, you could go into... (coughs) toxic area like this one and it'd take they about were fine, like me right now. it'll take about 48 <laughs> minutes and 32 seconds for it to actually hit you now you're probably going to die I know sorry about that um, so you're a replicant because you're not choking <laughs> that's right that's why I think it's okay to eat boiled dog anyway <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah that, that made me think that he is a replicant because they were all surviving there fine and they didn't take any precaution mm. so, you know, and it's interesting, it's just the little things, like, is the dog real? I don't know, ask him. Like, it seems like a flippant sort of Harrison Ford, like, that Harrison Ford being a grumpy old man is kind of, you know, how he does it. Yeah. Um, which is kind of funny because he was nothing like that in the, in the original, but I suppose, you know, 20 odd years on your own, yeah, yeah. and missing the love of your life, and your kid and everything you'll make you kind of grumpy but his flippant attitude about the dog actually says much more it's kind of like well what does it matter if the dog is real or not it's real enough for you to love the dog and to um, you know to want to take it for a walk and to feed it and to do whatever that you're going to treat it you're going to treat it how you treat a dog whether it's real or not Mm. You, you want to treat it with the same respect and, and reverence so it doesn't matter I don't need to know neither do you who cares yeah. I think that that says a lot because obviously the film 
the replicants is a metaphor for other things, mm. you know, uh, about acceptance and whatever. I suppose maybe it mattered maybe maybe more in, in the late eighties, early nineties when it was being filmed. But I just thought it was a really nice bit that, and maybe again, um, it might have literally just been a nothing and I'm making it out to be this big grand oh it's so smart and they're so intelligent the way they've written this but that's what I get from it you know and that's almost my take home point from the film it doesn't matter if you're does it matter that Ryan Gosling's a replicant no he's, he's certainly got more heart than all those cops that were calling him a skin job mm. they wouldn't have stood up and, and did all the things that, that he'd done and put himself in that much danger I don't think so same with, I used to think the replicants in, in Blade Runner were villains. Mm. Not one of them is. As far as I'm concerned, Pris acts kind of crazy, but after being a pleasure model for X amount of guys for how many years, you don't think that would make you go a little bit fucking crazy? Yeah, no. I think it would. True. Watching it back, there's nothing villainous about them. Oh, they just wanted was some life. They just wanted to survive. I want life. And, <laughs> yeah, and okay, the, you, he kills Tyrell, but I mean, well, fuck you for not creating me properly. I mean, that doesn't mean that. I don't f- think that makes them terribly villainous. Are they kind of a little bit creepy and un- unhinged? Yeah, but they've seen things, man. <laughs> Off the gates of Tannhauser. <laughs> exactly, they've seen things. So I don't know. Like they've they probably lived a lot of lifetimes and had a lot of pain. The belts of Orion. On the belts of Orion. <laughs> so, yeah, that was that. The femme fatale. Was she villainous? Maybe not. I think she just wanted to be the best, because she says, "I'm, I'm the best. I'm the best one." To, to, to Ryan Gosling. And then I thought to myself, "That's fucking Harrison Ford's daughter. It's her." I had that thought at one point as well. And then she's even, they talked about we're wearing blue and she's even got this blue shirt on underneath mm-hmm. her uniform and I'm kind of like, it's totally her. Like, it's definitely her. And then the, then he's like, you want to go meet your daughter? And I'm like, are we going to go meet the girl with the pink hair? And then it's that girl in the greenhouse. Mm-hmm. So I don't know, like, who's his daughter? I could I, I feel like you make an argument for all three and all three would really work. <laughs> and also Ryan Gosling. How do you how do you feel about it? Uh, f- probably, you know, probably inclined to agree with what you just said there, to be honest. Um meet his daughter now is it the girl behind the case or is she gonna show my memory or something like that? Who knows? Uh, that was a couple of things again, a couple of things that I took away from it. Because at first I was like, oh, his daughter's the girl that's behind the glass. And I thought, when did you think that? Eh? Did you think that previously, or was that just within the, the reveal? No, happened? just just by the the time the the, the part outside the lab, I was just thinking like, really? <laughs> it's I don't know. In a way, it was kind of like the sat there and went, "Hey guys, guys, I've got an idea. You know what's going to totally throw them." <laughs> Why don't we make the door the girl who's yeah you remember that girl from Act Two yeah you remember, yeah okay right that throwaway character that throwaway character what what if she's something more significant yeah yeah I kind of feel like it could be the could be the the femme fatale yeah yeah wouldn't that be interesting and then you get to see some of Harrison Ford's pain in the third film realizing that she she got killed Harrison's still around for the third film. <laughs> yeah, be fine, be fine, Jeez. be fine. Yeah, be fine. Is Ryan Ryan Gosling's character K or Joe? Is is K? Did K die for sure, or is he just fucking wrecked? Don't know. I looked as though they kind of made a big deal of him not breathing. It was just that subtle little thing. Um, you saw him lying in the steps, uh-huh. and then all of a sudden, he did a wee jerk movement, and then his body just kind of relaxed just before it panned out. Yeah. I, mean, I kind of thought they were saying that he's dead, but he's finally retired. Yeah, I kind of feel like, for my money, if they said right, we're making Blade Runner twenty fifty, and we're going to... get some of that Gosling modeling, you know, the Nexus Nine. Yeah, <laughs> um, and if they said Gosling was going to come back for it, I'd be fine with it. I would definitely want to see. I would want to see another one with this cast. I suppose that kind of says. A lot about the film. I would want. I would want to go back and see another one. 
and I would ask them, Denny, if you're listening, just to blend it a little bit more to Blade Runner. Little bit less Arrival, a <laughs> little bit more Blade Runner. So give me some dirty on the street stuff with a little bit more Blade Runner music, and then we can fuck off to outer space and go see Jared Leto and fucking whatever with his blind fucking, you know. We can go do that and give the mm, all that that you want, you know what I'm saying? That's that's how I feel about it, yo. Just blend it a little bit more. And also, I think, I was thinking, do you reckon they called it 2049 because they might want to do a film in between that doesn't have Harrison Ford? I don't know, apparently there's a, I know if they've, they've been online but I've not looked at them because I don't want to spoil anything. Uh huh. But there's a lot of, like, you know, shorts to go along with this film. Yes, so, I never watched any yeah, of them. Yeah, so, like, there's a little bit more Jared Leto and there's a little bit more. <sighs> you know what? You know, you know what's happening when you leave, right? I might have to YouTube them, see if I can find them. <laughs> Going to go watch the shorts. There's a, apparently a video with Ryan Gosling and Harrison Ford just getting pissed on some show and laughing their ass off. I think it was the Graham Norton show. Going to have to hit that up as yeah. well. So. There's also a. Um, the, this one I did see but I looked at the photograph more than the video but when they're fighting in the, the lounge uh-huh. um, Harrison Ford actually connected with oh did he Island, yeah. fuck like for real so there, there's supposed to be like that footage kicking about as well he must have been sore that day you, that's another thing I like about the film location 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 mm-hmm. it's not all green screen no it's, there's so much practical you could barely tell in the CGI like I would say, I would argue, if you'd never seen the first one, mm-hmm. that you don't have to have to watch this film and enjoy it. Would you concur? I concur, yeah. Would you also agree that if you hadn't seen the first one, that you would believe that Rachel in this was a real person? Like, it wasn't it wasn't um, a body double and then the face mapping and the whole thing. Because I I could see that it wasn't quite her. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say to an extent, but I think because we're so used to it now with Star Wars and everything else, you know. You just, but do you think the average you know, person would it. know it if they didn't know Sean Young and that she was in, she was in um, Blade Runner and the whole thing? Depends how closely they're. All it says depends how closely they're looking at the face. Yeah. Yeah. Face is just a fraction off. Mm-hmm. But man, did it give you chills when she came walking in there. Wrong heels, though. That's the wrong heels. They're too squared at the back. Just saying. So wrong heels and uh, the eye colour was all wrong as well. Yeah. So. I would mean... <laughs> as a, <laughs> be a total... I, I would have went with the eye colour. He would have said, do you know... Jared Leto was like, so... Is do you like perfect? her? <laughs> I'm like, wrong heels, bro. <laughs> oh. Boom! <laughs> Change your fucking shoes. <laughs> just, just imagine if like Harrison Ford had said that. Yeah, yeah. It's the, the, wrong he, the heels were more square. It's the wrong shoes. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Kneecap her first, then. Yeah, to shoot her feet off, <laughs> and then she could go and join the fucking the fucking Kingsman. Yeah, true. But uh, I didn't like it. <laughs> right. So succinctly, very very quick. Which. which Things you liked, and if there's anything you didn't like, and then we'll, we'll score it, and I will do the same. And that's uh, how it works. The cinematography was beautiful. Uh, oh, yes, 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 yes. Roger Deakins, amazing cinematographer. Um, what else has he done that I, I would know? Uh, James Bond, he's done he's done Skyfall. I'm pretty sure he's done Skyfall. Do you know what? I've never seen Skyfall. Have you never seen I've you know, seen every other Bond film apart from Skyfall. I actually think you would very much enjoy Skyfall. I'm scared to watch a James Bond film because I've seen uh, I've seen Casino Royale, amazing, loved it, probably my favourite. And then I saw Quantum of Souls, hated it. <laughs> that, which made me not want to see Skyfall. Then I went and watched Spectre, also hated it. Okay, so, yes, I was right, he did do Skyfall. Uh, he also, Skyfall! He's also worked with the Cones on a few films, so he's done True Grit, A Serious Man, uh, Sicario, I don't know if you saw Sicario. Did, didn't like it. Uh, well, he filmed that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it looked nice enough, but I didn't like the film. He's, I mean, the guy's... It wasn't not, even that special. I didn't. I don't get what everyone is so... I don't get it. The Big Lebowski. Nah. Old Brother Barlow. Nah. A Beautiful Mind. Didn't realise he did that, but I don't mm. know. Uh, Jarhead, No Country Ooh. for Old Men. Mm. Not uh, seen that I one, actually. Like he's, done, he's done a fair whack. Uh, Oscar nomination for him. Potentially. Yeah, the cinematography was, was nice. Uh, 
oh man it was beautiful it was like art scene by scene it's the best way I can describe it well that's how Blade Runner is meant to be isn't it oh, yeah, realistically and it's meant to be a lot of do you know what I'd really like I'd really like it if there was like a a, a voiceover on the DVD extras all right, okay, yeah, like a director's commentary. Yeah. yeah, no, no, like by 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 Ryan Gosling, like as in oh, right. kind of character. Uh, yeah, yeah, because it would just kind of hit that oh, right, okay. noir right. style. So if we took out commentary, like director's commentary, just like commentary, full stop, as in you know how you get that option sometimes you can watch it with commentary or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Right. okay, yeah, okay, okay. Yeah. No, I I literally mean like with Ryan going. Yeah, I knew, I knew she wasn't real. Yeah. But to me, she was all I had. <laughs> oh, the office is in town. She had to walk into mine. Yeah. Yeah, right, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. That would be pretty nice. Just, just drop in like 10 sound bites just peppered throughout the film. <laughs> Lovely. Um, story story was good. It stuck. Oh, my God. Excuse me. It's now whatever time it is. 20 to 1 in the morning. Yeah. Um, it... It, I thought it was faithful to the entire, you know, Blade Runner universe, as it were. You know, um, the acting was top notch. Yep. It was. It was just all around such a great fucking film. Yeah. You know, possibly not my number one. Possibly number two of 2017 so far. Okay. Right. Sure. Um. Uh, Dunkirk still got number one for me right now. <laughs> uh, I, th- I think I gave Dunkirk like a fucking three. Eh. I gave Dunkirk a three. Uh, out of ten? Yep. The hell's wrong with you? The hell's wrong with you? It's just... <laughs> whatever. But, yeah, man, you know, uh, possibly one of those rare cases where it's equal, if not slightly better than the original. Nah, you know? better. I don't know. I'm, it definitely warrants the second view in any way. I was thinking when it... About halfway through, I was thinking that could it be equal? Could it be better? And then when the whole thing played out, I was like, no, it's not better. Is it equal? Maybe. And I... I, I, I think I need to watch them both in a row and see how I feel about it. I really, really enjoyed it, but I... Is it iconic? Is the question. Would it have eight different cuts of it? Oh Christ, I don't know. But would it though? <laughs> you know, like, would you watch? Eight I don't different know. I think cuts? that's. I think that's probably the definitive version of this. Knowing how much of a perfectionist Denny Villeneuve actually is, it's really good. It's really good. I it, mean, maybe for all we know, maybe there's a four-hour cut out there someplace. I'd watch it. Yeah. Yeah. It's so hard to. to 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 rate a film just straight after you've seen it. Okay, gotta go home, digest it, and yeah, percolate it. Yeah, ejaculate it. Ejaculate what? it. That's <laughs> something else. That's later. I, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go for it right now. Okay, and I'm gonna say that right now for me, although it might, it'll probably be revised once it's watched again in context with both the films. Mm-hmm. Right now, it's probably a nine. Yeah. Yeah, how do you feel about that? I might have given it another wee half mark. On <gasps> Cheeky nine and a half. Cheeky nine and a half. Wait, so it's Dunkirk a ten for you? Oh my god! <laughs> really, you gave it a full ten? That means it's perfect. No, oh, for two thousand seventeen, so far it's my number one film. So wow, I think I think Logan's my number one film. Yeah, yeah. Nine might, and a half. I might put that at number three. So. Dystopian future. Mm, mm, it's our jam. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell we're born in the 80s, eh? Yeah. Oh, everyone's all fucked, man. It's all going to go to shit, man. Born in the 80s where there was a threat of a nuclear war just around the corner. Now, ah. to, now we're now to 2017 and there's still a threat of a nuclear war just around the corner. Just around the corner. But <laughs> then... It keeps us on our toes. Keeps us on our toes, but... <laughs> It's been 34 years, it's never happened. Yeah, well... So, there's, you know... There's always and, tomorrow. And I dare say... <laughs> If we were to speak to someone who is 44, they'd probably say the same thing. Oh, like, uh, there's always some imminent danger. Yeah, maybe <laughs> not. Um, fuck, so nine, nine and a half. It's a monster. Can't wait to hear what the other guys think of it. Well, 
not your brother obviously because he's a dick um, but the other guy <laughs> yeah Steve Steve Steve, Steve. Stu Kev the whole team I think Stu will dig it yeah. yeah and obviously all the listeners out there we want to hear what you think of the film did it do justice to Blade Runner join in on these theories yes it join is. in on the theories um it's time to go deep on Blade Runner tonight I think I'm going to go watch all those extras because there's extras with like like you said the little shorts with like Jared Leto yeah. going and in a meeting somewhere and this and that you're going to go balls deep we're going to go balls deep we're going to have the last meal of the day watch a couple of those while this uploads and then yeah pretty sweet um just let you folks know this was meant to be the Wonder Woman review but yeah. Wonder Woman got bumped because well I've reviewed it myself and it is on there but um, I wanted to get the opinions of someone else who wasn't me so and we were doing the DCEU stuff, so David and me were going to do it tonight. But then I basically saw I ended up bumping David for you mm-hmm. and wanting to get Blade Runner seen and get it done. And I knew that the only way me and you were going to get to talk about Blade Runner on the was podcast tonight. was tonight. Yeah. And it was the best time for me to go and watch it because I could have missed it this week again if I didn't watch it tonight. Mm-hmm. So if you're expecting Wonder Woman, we, were, we will do Wonder Woman next week and then we're into Star Wars starting with The Phantom Menace. So that's what we're going to be doing until the end of the year. And obviously, Thor Ragnarok and Justice League will be dropped in there. I don't think anything else will, will come up. Might do, but maybe not. And the Buffy uh, season, the, the next part of the Buffy season 3 will hopefully be filmed or recorded on Friday. Just letting the folks know, you're just sitting there like, I don't care about this. I want to go <laughs> no, home. I'm, yeah, I'm just joking. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so... Let us know your theories. Did you like it? Is it better than the original? Did it did it miss the mark? Were you just sick of the sight of Ryan Gosling? Did you walk out after twenty minutes? <laughs> yep. Did did the fact that Ryan Gosling's beard length changing all throughout the film annoy you that much, or does it just okay? Because it did. It, there is one scene I when he's he, blood spatter as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There is one scene when he he goes back and does the test, mm-hmm. and then his beard is basically trimmed down to fuck. And his hair and his stubble is not black. So I think that was a pickup. I think. Because mo- the rest of the time it's all he's he's obviously darkened his hair and his beard for this. Mm-hmm. But that one he looked like Ryan like Ryan Gosling, not Joe. Anyway, I want to thank the sponsors of the podcast. This podcast. Do you have sponsors? Every other podcast, yes. They keep the lights on. They keep this free for all the folks at home. Oh, okay. Because we're not yet sponsored by me undies or <laughs> whatever else that Jericho so, and uh, Joe Rogan shill. So who are these well, people that, who are shilling our podcast? That would be Alpha Fitness. They Never. are a personal training company based in Perth. But you don't just have to live in Perth to get the benefits. You could get a training or nutrition program or even just... Follow them on social media and get a little bit of daily motivation. Isn't that nice? I feel motivated. Good. <laughs> Hopefully not too much because it is late and you want to go to sleep. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, I feel like I can I don't know, take on galaxies right now. <laughs> Taking yeah. on galaxies. Well, you're going to have to for uh, for um, Infinity War. That's true. Because he's throwing a moon at them apparently or a planet. I've still not seen the, the trailer that it was leaked. <laughs> bloody amateurs <laughs> just throwing a planet just throwing a planet that's that would never never ever vibe in Dragon Ball Z so like, like Mars Bar Planets do you remember Mars Bar Planets used to get home sweets I think you're showing your age now well, it's only like, like the last few years oh right okay yeah. I'm showing my ignorance ignorance for chocolate yes yes you are because hmm. I'm trained by Alpha Fitness <laughs> I was say, and who are you trained by who told you to stop eating chocolate <laughs> it could also have something to do with my lactose allergy uh. ah yes <laughs> oh, that will, will end on you laughing at me for my pain <laughs> Thank you. right uh, follow us everywhere at social media and you've got to check out the website the buffgeekpodcastblog.wordpress.com now, did I see today that it's got links to all our uh, Twitters or something now? Our tweets and our twats and our everything else. It's not got a link to my twat, I'll tell you that for nothing. Okay. But, um, um I didn't see that. The old Twitter. <laughs> but you can certainly, there is, there is, uh, there is uh, some links to it, but I don't think it's got all of them. But I could be wrong. 
Maybe you can. Have you got? Uh, have you got something it's to show just, me? There was a there was a, a photo one that guys threw up today. I, I don't know. Just the uh, oh, there we are. It just looked like it had little little links to all of our twatin machines. Oh yes, 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 yes. Okay, that that's that's the that's the Twitter. That's not the website. Oh no, sorry. I was just like there was something that's got links to our. Uh, Yes, yeah, so right. if you go to, uh, let's see, if you go to at Buff Geek Podcast on Twitter, you'll get all of our own personal Twitters there, and obviously at the website at the Buff Geek Podcast blog dot wordpress dot com, and just type in the Buff Geek on YouTube, on Instagram, on Facebook, on LinkedIn. You're going to find us there. Click on the links. It's all hooked up because we're really clever that way. That's how we do. That's how we roll. That's how we do. Do you want to do your sign off? Yeah, sure. Okay, so you can find me on uh, Instagram and Facebook, Ian Stobie. Uh, Twitter is at BigStobes81. I think that's all my social media handles. You still got that page up there? Oh, yeah. And uh, I'm also on uh, the Buff Geek podcast uh, page uh, on Twitter and WordPress. And my username on that is Ian Cinematic Musings. Oh, is it? Yes. Oh, I didn't yes, know that. That's very nice. <laughs> okay, so some people you can follow would be at Kezogen, at Wise Pranker, at Big Stobes 81 as you just said, at D Stobie, and at The Buff Geek. That's all on the Twitters. That's probably the quickest way to reach us if you want to interact. And these guys now owe us money for plugging them. Yeah, yeah, they do. Yeah. yeah. Um, or blow jobs, whatever, you know, comes no, first. I'll, t- I'll take the money, thanks. That's kind of weird, your brother. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll take the money, thanks. <laughs> I'll take half and half. Uh, I like to be half cocked and kind of just be flopped up a little bit and, you know, a little bit antsy for the day. Anyway. Uh... <laughs> anyway, so, um, yeah, just subscribe and stuff and uh, hope you enjoyed this review. Hashtag the Buff Geek Podcast. I've seen things you people wouldn't believe. Attack ships on fire off the shoulder of Orion. I watch sea beams glitter in the dark near the Tannhauser Gate. All those memories will be lost in time. Like tears in the rain. Time to die. I've seen things you people wouldn't believe. Attack ships on fire off the shoulder of Orion. I watched sea beams glitter in the dark near the Tannhauser Gate. All those moments will be lost in time, like tears in rain. Time to die.